Welcome to another inspiring episode of the Elite Expert Insider Podcast. Hosts Melanie Johnson and Jen Foster are the owners of Elite Online Publishing. They're both Wall Street Journal, USA Today bestselling authors. We're really glad you're here because this podcast was designed for you. Meet industry experts that share their secrets and strategies. Get successful results for your business in money, relationships, health, and your life. Each episode is going to inspire you to take action towards reaching your greatness. Hey everyone, welcome to Elite Expert Insider. We're happy you're here. I'm so grateful that we have a really great interview today with Tomer Hen. So let me tell you a little bit about him. He is a serial entrepreneur with over a decade of experience in the digital marketing industry. And during this time, he has superheaded notable campaigns with Fortune 500 brands and his expertise and growing portfolio, he is recognized as one of Forbes 30 promising entrepreneurs under 30, which is really excited. Lots of numbers there. I <laughs> like that, 30, under 30. Um, he helps brand visionaries and community leaders and content creators, and he actualizes their vision by offering a seamless and tailored plug-and-play solution to establish and grow their brand. So really excited to have you here. Thank you, Tomer, for being here, and welcome. Thank you so much, Jan. Thank you for having me. That's uh, very nice to be here. Great. Well, tell us a little bit how you got into the digital marketing space and a little bit about your background. Yeah. So um, thank you for asking. So I've been an entrepreneur for over 15 years now, ever since I I basically remember. Uh, Never had an actual boss um, I, when I was 13, I wanted to buy uh, a Sony PlayStation for myself. I didn't want to wait for my birthday for my parents to give me some money. So I tried, I basically Googled how to make money. Um, and I couldn't work legally anywhere. So I had to find ways to, um, have, you know, make money in, in some ways where people do not know my age. They don't care about my age. So I found out that you can sell. Um, some stuff on eBay and you can make money out of it. So Mm -hmm. I had, um, I sold some uh, Dead Sea lotions and some other cosmetics uh, online. I went in my school breaks, I took the packages and, um, and send them over in my post office globally. Um, And that's how I discovered working from home when working from a computer when um, it was very, it was not as popular as it is right now. Um, Mm -hmm. And it just grew and grew and grew. Uh, It was a, you know, it was a hobby that I wanted to have for my own just to, you know, just to have some pocket money for myself, not depending on my parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it just grew to something way bigger. I just love the way that it allowed me to work anywhere I want, whenever I want. I can go with my friends to the beach. I can go uh, to the mall. I can do whatever I want uh, and still uh, make money in my spare time. Yeah, I love that. And it's great that at a young age, you were able to see that there was a way to make money. And eBay was a great, is a great way. I've, I've sold a few things on eBay. So that's great. I like that. Yes, that was, uh, that was very exciting. Um, you know, really like the you know, packaging and getting the feedback from the customers and um, knowing that someone at the un- other end of the world just received something I packaged in my school break. So that was very <laughs> exciting. Um, but eBay was never my, I would say that anything, it, it was not actually the passion for the business itself, but more for, or the money, actually, it was more for the lifestyle and the mm-hmm. freedom it allowed me to, to live in whatever age. And I, ever since I just said that this is how I want to live my life. Mm-hmm. Well, and like many entrepreneurs, like the serial entrepreneur just kind of comes because you're like, I like this, but like, let's see if this is better. Right. So, so tell us, how did you get into the digital marketing and become the 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 30 under 30 that you are today <laughs> yeah so uh so you know I, I i discovered that ebay is becoming very very you know flooded with with sellers and um it was harder and harder to make profits out of ebay and again it was just my first business i encountered so it was never anything that i was very passionate about and i wanted to keep on living that lifestyle of working from anywhere and and um at any time so, and then it was when the, I think the first iPhones came out. So I, I discovered uh, app marketing and discovered that, you know, a lot of businesses want to reach for customers and a lot of customers are looking for more businesses um, with their apps. So um, 
Uh, then I found out that I can market some apps and applications online, get commissions, get commissions for it, and uh, uh, get some marketing campaigns for them, done for them, advertise their apps and advertise their businesses. So, uh, and this is how I, I got into marketing and marketing different or other people's products, I would say, or other companies' products, which I started as apps. And uh, that's a business I ran for, I run for almost 10 years now. Um, uh, we do app user acquisition uh, for big brands right now. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So big brands like Amazon, Audible, MasterCard, right? Some really big brands. Yes. Yeah. That's these cool. are the, the type of brands that we, we, we work with or used to work with. Um, and that was very exciting. Um, I never thought that I would have my own office or my own team or that we have, you know, global offices uh, all around the world, but it was just something that I done from my home when I was living with my parents. And I just, you know, I just had my first employee, um, to help me. And then another one, another one, another one. And they, when we were six, they were like, okay, Tomer, we can't meet at coffee shops anymore. <laughs> we need to have a proper <laughs> office. So, you know, we just said, okay, let's get an office. And this is how, this is how the, the, the business grew, but we never had like a business, a proper business plan to grow or, you know, to become as big as, as we, we became. So I'm very grateful for it. I like that. Well, let's dive into some, some entrepreneur stuff that just comes along with being a serial entrepreneur, like imposter syndrome. Tell us a little bit about that, a little bit about that and how, how we can make it our friend. Yeah. So um, that's, you know, I'm so happy that, that you, you bring this up because I feel that I, you know, I, I've, I think that every entrepreneur has uh, experienced imposter syndrome or feeling that they're out of their league or they're, they're, even if they're given with a great opportunity or a great project, or even if you're not an entrepreneur and you're just accepted to, to a new position or a new role, a new company, you sometimes feel that, okay, you know, I'm, I'm not as good as they probably think. I will not perform as well because I just got it because I was lucky or I was in the right place at the right time or, you know, whatever story that you tell yourself. Um, and I always try, and a lot of people say, you know, their, their advice was to uh, try to push it away and try to remind yourself how good you are and how, how much, you know, how awesome you are at that job and how perfect it would be. But some days it, it, it just doesn't work, right? You just keep on feeling that, that feeling and whatever you, you resist persists, as they say. And when you try to push it away, you sometimes feel it even stronger and, and harder, I would say. So I realized that the best advice for myself would be to just embrace that I will have imposter syndrome. And it is, it is a part of you know, being a human being and being an entrepreneur, especially. So whenever I realize that I have it and I will always probably have it and, you know, I cannot push it away and it is probably there to protect me, just like other, you know, protection mechanisms that we have as human beings. Um, I would just say, okay, this is, this is here to protect me. This is here to make me a better human being and to push me towards my goal. Let's make this my best friend. Let's make, instead of pushing it away, let's try to, to flip it and see imposter syndrome as a positive sign that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going into bigger projects that, or bigger clients or bigger opportunities that I used to have. I'm out of my comfort zone. It makes sense that my body, my brand will, you know, chemically uh, 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 get these feelings because, you know, feelings are just chemicals that are outside, mm-hmm. that are out there in your brain. Um, so let's just turn this and make this my best friend. Let's just, let's just play the I'm not good enough game. I am enough, but I'm not good enough in that specific thing. I have mm-hmm. the confidence in myself and I might not have the competence to accomplish it. So let's just play I'm not good enough game with myself and realize what do I need to do or who do I need to connect to or what do I need to learn in order to become better at this space. I have the confidence in myself that I'll figure it out. I just don't have the competence Mm -hmm. in this specific area or I don't have the right skills or enough. I'm not sharp enough in that, you know, skill or trait or I don't have that connection or knowledge to serve that client or build that business or go on this project. But I do have the confidence in myself. And that's a huge difference because I feel Mm -hmm. that many people... um, 
and and that's uh, uh, um, and I, I read a great book called uh, Think Again, mm-hmm. and 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 the author talks about the difference between competence and confidence, and I and I I connected this to my you know my my make my imposter syndrome kind of thing, and it really connected and it really resonated with me where I felt that. I always need to remember that I have the confidence that I'll figure it out because, mm-hmm. in, you know, everyone had times where they were not at the top of the game, where they lost money, where they were not as good as they wanted to be, where they were, you know, failing at a project where, you know, the expectation they had from themselves or that other people had from themselves were not, uh, 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 they, they did not make it. So, w- so, and, 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 you know, you got up, you know, mm-hmm. you are here, you're building a new business, you're going a new project, you serve a new client, you have a new job, you have that new employee or whatever. So, you know, you learned from it, you got yeah. back, you know, you got, you got better out of it. So you need to remember these moments and understand that these moments are the moments that get to you better and yeah. that you, and, and that what builds your confidence that even if you don't have the competence or the knowledge or the, the skills to have, you know, to build this project that you go through this challenge, you know, you still have the confidence in yourself that you will make it, that you will be able to create that connection, that you will be brave to say, I don't know, I need help. Yeah. And that's a huge trait of an entrepreneur. I mean, asking for help is one of the things that I feel that myself as an entrepreneur, and I know that many other friends or or colleagues, this is something that we as, as entrepreneurs sometimes feel that we, you know, can't really do, we're not allowed to do, we don't give ourselves right. the permission to say, I don't know, I need help. Yeah, you can help me with that. Right, because we always think, oh, I can just do it. I'll just do it. You know, <laughs> like yes. you just say, I yes. can do it. I don't need help. I, but if you just ask the question, who could help me with that? Or how could I mm-hmm. outsource this? So I'm not so burned out or busy, right? then then you do you do feel more confident and then you actually do have the confidence because you can hire someone else to do it that yeah you know that and I do like that about human beings too when you ask a question to yourself your mind figures it out like yeah and if you have the confidence that you will figure it out you know that's why people always say you know oh I thought of this in the shower right before I went to bed I thought of this you know because you've asked the question to yourself how can I get this accomplished or how can we figure this out whether you're doing it yourself or not, you might be outsourcing it or finding someone else to do it, right? Mm-hmm. And asking mm-hmm. for that and, help. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there, there are two things that I like to, I really like that you, you're saying that because it also connects to another great book that I've read by Dan Sullivan called Who Not How, um, mm-hmm. where you can ask instead of how can I do that, it could be who can help me with that? Who knows mm-hmm. it best and can help me figure it out? And, you know, the other thing is that I'm, I'm always surprised. And I think that people would always be surprised how much other people want to help you. Mm-hmm. People don't really believe that other people would want to help you, but there is something about us as human beings that really want to help other people. That when someone asks for help, when someone says, you know, they have their, their, their humble humility, I would say, or their confident humility, when they say, Hey, I'm into this challenge, but I don't know how to go through it. I need mm-hmm. help. I'm struggling mm-hmm. with that task or with that thing. You'll be surprised of how much people would appreciate because, you know, as entrepreneurs, especially in this day and age, we, we sometimes we have too much ego, I would say, asking for help or saying, mm-hmm. I don't know, because it's so easy to find information online. And, you know, there's so much competition about, about expertise. And, when when you when you come to a very honest conversation and you say, "Hey, I have this challenge. I I'm not sure I'm, you know, competent enough to to solve it. I don't have I don't feel I have the right experience or skill. Can you help me? Or do you know anyone who could help me?" People are very surprised. People really like that you come, you know, that honest and and ask for help or ask for their network's help. Mm-hmm. that they they really want to be there. They really want to be the hero for you. Yeah. And it's part of that vulnerability on our entrepreneur side that we have to be vulnerable to ask for that help. I like that. Yes. Yes. Like That's, that. you know, I, I feel that entrepreneurship is the best self-improvement 
profession and 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 an area that in course that you can take in your life because it it really makes you go to these places these uncomfortable places like being vulnerable or ask for help or or be honest or have that tough conversation with yourself or with others that you know just grows you as 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 a person you know you'll mm-hmm. be a better spouse you'll be a better parent you'll be a better you know uh, a kid you'll be a better whatever um so and yeah so it, it basically connects your basic human you know growth traits that we'd have to to grow with ourselves so i really like i really like looking at it as you know that's a challenge for me to become a better person you know having mm-hmm. that tough conversation or being that honest or vulnerable with that teammate would really make me the person i thrive to be mm-hmm. i like that well let's face something that all entrepreneurs have in their lives and that is burnout so i mean i've been an entrepreneur pretty much my whole life as well and you know i find myself working at 10 p.m at night and wonder why do i have my laptop while i'm trying to relax <laughs> you know wait i gotta yeah. go to bed now so t- t- let's talk about burnout a little bit yeah that's a tough thing right burnout is a tough thing i know that everyone experiences it and you know, I experience it and I, I'm aware that if I don't take care of myself, I'll probably experience burnout. And taking care of myself means that I know that I work and I have my business to serve my life and not the other way around. I don't mm-hmm. leave to serve my business. And when you come from that mindset, you know, you put those glasses where you can, you can see everything that you do in a way where, okay, it's, it's me first because when I'm at my best, I know that I serve my business at its at my best. When I'm tired, when I'm burnt out, my team suffers, people notice, my clients would not get the service they want, my work would not be as, you know, the level I expect myself. Um, and, um, you know, my content would not be as creative, all of that. So mm-hmm. sometimes we have the tendency to say, well, I need to work harder. I need to work more. I need to have 26 hours a day. But I figured out that the best days are the days that I work for two or three hours. You know, I just choose to work less and work and be more efficient with my work and understand mm-hmm. that I need to have one or two main tasks that or main roles that I do best. And everything else has to be either delegated or has to be outsourced or has to be removed from my calendar. Because I know that when I have two, three, four hours, and you know, I, I do have the days when I work for nine hours, but I don't feel that's work. That's effortless effort, as they say. And mm-hmm. that's where I really, and that's, that, that's the, the end goal that I want to have for my life. My main motivation would not be achievements or money. It would be having fun while I work, is looking yeah. at work as fun. So if I want to work for 12 hours today, fine, but I don't feel like I'm burned out. And then I look at my entire year, my entire life as cycles. You know, you have your on and off cycles. You have, mm-hmm. you have that on, a, on an annual level you have it on the on a quarterly level you have it on a monthly level a weekly level and a daily level you know you can say i work for 90 minutes right now but i'm gonna take a break of another 90 minutes i'm going to work you know very hard or i'm gonna finish that project within three days and i'm going to take you know a very long weekend with my family or with my friends or just you know spending a time for myself to to recover i'm going to work for for two months and I'm going to finish that, you know, and reach that goal and finish that target. And then I'm going to take a month off. Mm-hmm. That's it. I think as an entrepreneur, we have the privilege to just design our life as like that. And I usually design my life. I'm sorry. I usually design my business and my schedule around how I feel I'm at my best overall in my life, not the mm-hmm. other way around. I don't take yeah. vacations based on, you know, my, my, or I don't take time off based on my business needs. Mm-hmm. I would I would create those business needs to meet the way I feel I live at my best because then I know that my business would also thrive. Right. I like that. It's like taking your life schedule and saying, this is how I want to design my life. 
and now yes. fitting your business into that and still being able to live how you want to live in your life, which is yeah. opposite than some people think. Cause they think, Oh, you know, as an entrepreneur, I have to do this and this and this and work this many hours. And, you know, and, and you really got to look at it the opposite way, your life first, and then your business. I like, yes, that. yes. And that's, that's a great point. And, and it just, just reminded me where, what you just said, like I have entrepreneurs say, I have to work this and this, I have to do this, or I have, I have to do that. I I'm on a need half and should diet. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I'm not saying any of these words to myself. I don't mm -hmm. need to do anything. I don't have to do anything. I don't, sh I, I, I don't should do anything, right? I should not do anything. I want to do something. I mm -hmm. want to leave this way. I want to work on that project. I want to have this business. I want to build that, you know, team. I don't have to do that. I don't have to be an entrepreneur. I can, you know, I can work at whatever I want, but sometimes people go into this roller coaster where they, they, they build a business for a certain reason. They wanted the freedom. They wanted the financial freedom. They wanted the, you know, um, to buy that thing. They wanted to feel this way. They wanted to provide it for their family. So they, they, they go in this roller coaster where this business takes ownership on them and then they have all these haps and shoots and needs but no one ever said that you have to have that business no one mm -hmm. ever said that you have to make that amount of money this month what would happen if you'd make it next month what would happen if your business was smaller now but you live a happier life you'd probably make way more money i know that th right. this is this is sometimes feel like you know it's easier to say than done but but really, if you take a look at your life and you tell that story to yourself, I know that I'm at my best when I go, you know, we all have that feeling when you go onto the computer, like, oh, I have to do this. And you're like, you know, so grumpy around it. And you just, <laughs> you just don't like it. You'll just burn out. You know, you'll yeah. burn out if, it, if it's not today, it's next week. If it's not next week, it's next month or within a year. And then, you know, what happens? So you were very productive. You had, you know, you've done all of these tasks this week, month, year, but then, you know, you just can't stand it anymore. Yeah. I like that. Well, Tomer, tell people where they can go to find you, get more information and connect. Yeah. So I'm always happy to connect with exciting entrepreneurs. Um, you know, we, my, my vision right now and my mission is to help uh, uh, creators, entrepreneurs, uh, influencers to help them build their e-commerce brand and execute on their vision. Um, but I'm always, always happy to have a talk with any uh, excited entrepreneur. So uh, feel free to go on LinkedIn. Uh, that's linkedin.com uh, forward slash Tomer dash him. And uh, uh, yeah, so feel free to send a message. I'll have, I'll be happy to have a chat and uh, yeah, that's, that's the best place to find me. Perfect. Well, we'll put that link up in the show notes. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much. Jen. Thank you for, thank you for this interview. It was great. Great. Well, remember everyone to subscribe to the podcast and leave a comment. We'd love your feedback and we'll see you next time on Elite Expert Insider. Hey, are you looking to increase your revenue, build credibility and elevate your brand? This podcast is brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, an innovative publishing and full spectrum marketing company. They will publish and market your book to make it a number one bestseller. Becoming an author is the best way to market your business. So contact them at EliteOnlinePublishing.com today. All of their authors become number one bestsellers.